Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So I've been noticing that not all the comments that people are putting in are being followed up by us. Meaning like topics for a video? Sometimes, yeah. Well, we're gonna change that today. We are gonna change that today. <laughs> so someone gave us an idea a while back on a video and asked a question. And so here we are actually following through on what we said we would do. And we're gonna talk about line twist today because that was the question that somebody raised about a month ago when mm -hmm. we did the Ozark rig uh, underwater Wednesday. And so we're gonna talk about line twist how to deal with it, how to avoid it, how to prevent it. And I got some things, there's three things that I bet guys don't know that they're doing that creates line twist in the first place. So we'll get to line twist when we come back. Back to MFO, everybody. I'm Mark Fisher. I'm Megan Fuller. Guys, before we get into talking about line twists, just if you would, please, we appreciate you tuning in every day. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. Uh, we're trying to get to our goals this year or in the beginning of next year, and so we would really appreciate your support by hitting that subscribe button, that like button, and sending us your comments. As you mentioned, this is this episode is coming from right. one of our viewers uh, comments. So let's talk about line twist. I, I'm going to break this video up in, a, in a several different categories. Number right. one, how do you prevent line twist? How do you keep it from happening in the first place? Don't and, go fishing. <laughs> well, that's not an option. <laughs> uh, however, there are some things that guys do right off the bat that I think create line twist and they don't even know it. Oh, okay. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how you put the line on your reel, especially your spinning reels. Okay. Okay. A lot of guys will take their spool and they will put a pencil through here and then they will spool it onto their spinning reel. Makes sense. Yeah, it doesn't though, because look, when, <laughs> well, it, it makes sense in that that's what guys do, but it's wrong. Your line is spooled on this spool going this direction. So it's coming off and spinning this way, but then you are putting it onto your reel. Let me grab one and show you. Okay. You are putting it onto your reel with this spool going this direction. So you're combining you're putting it this way and then it's going this oh. way you are twisting your line when okay. you do that so when you spool line onto a spinning reel it's important that you lay your spool of line flat onto a table or on a floor or whatever and then you spool the line so that it comes off your spool like this so that it just uncoils off that spool this direction in the same manner that it is being put onto your reel. That will prevent line twists. Now, the question is, how do you know whether it should be this way or this way, okay? The answer to that is, I can't tell you right now, but you can tell when you're doing it. Put your line out, run it through your rod, get it to your reel, reel it up two or three, four or five times, and then let your line loose. If your line twists up, you've got it backwards, and all you have to do is flip it over, and you're good to go. If your line comes out, and then you reel it up five times, and it hangs nice and straight, mm -hmm. then you've got it the right way, and you can go ahead and keep reeling up. So tip number one, make sure that you're putting your line on the correct way to begin with. That way you're not starting out with line twist. Second tip, when you're casting, you make everybody makes a cast and a lot of people will take 
this line and then the first thing that they'll do is engage their reel with the handle and you will click that over like that. You're actually starting a small amount of line twist every time you do that because in order to get that, that spool to engage, you have to start turning the reel before it's actually engaged. So what I will do is make my cast and then I will hand move the, the cage open and I'll actually pull out a little bit of line so that then the first time I start reeling, I'm reeling without putting any twist into it. So you do, you do that every time? Every cast, every, every cast. cast I cast out, I hand put the bale over, I'll pull out a little bit of line, and then I'll start to reel in. Every cast, it is habit to me. That's the way I do that. Open it up, cast out, and then I'm ready to go, okay? Okay, that, I've never even noticed you do that. Think about a full day of casting, click in my bail, casting, click in my bail. Even though I'm only putting about a quarter of a turn in there before it starts, well, quarter of a turn, four casts, I just put one loop of twist in. By the time I get done making a thousand casts, I've got some line twist going on. So that is something that I, make sure that I do on a regular basis. Not only that, but it also allows me, I'm just checking to make sure that I don't have any loops in here when I pull out the line and I've got it all set up and I'm ready to go. And meanwhile, the dog is chasing <laughs> after my bait as I'm flipping around. So that's the second tip. Okay. Okay. Now, how do, and again, we're still on the whole, how do you avoid line twist? So the third thing that you can do to prevent line twist is to use a swivel. I've got some problems with a swivel. All Number right. one is by adding a swivel, you're adding two more knots. So especially if you're using braided line, you can't, in most cases, you can't use a swivel to attach your braided line to your fluorocarbon because then you can't reel it up because the swivel will get, will reel up into your rod guides and that won't work. You won't be able to cast well, it risks damage to your rod guides. So now you've got too much leader length and you're not able to cast well. So what it means is you'd end up having a knot between your floral and your, and your braid. A uni knot. A uni knot, right. And then you'd have another knot somewhere in your leader between the top of the swivel and the bottom. Sometimes you have to do it. It's just that adding knots means you're adding weak spots to your line. I don't like that. Not to mention the fact that this swivel now can also catch weeds and things like that, which then becomes something that's going to make your cast less effective. And the other part, quite honestly, is I don't like having more metal mm -hmm. where they can, a fish can see it and maybe not go after the bait because there's something that's not natural there. I want it to be invisible. Right. My fluorocarbon line is as close to invisible as I can get. My swivel is not, okay? But there are times that you need to put a swivel in. What are those times? So let's say I was fishing with a uh, a floating worm, for example. Okay, a floating worm is going to constantly swivel and spin. I'm going to get line twist in a very short period of time if I'm using a floating worm. And because a floating worm is coming across the surface, I'm less worried about having a swivel because they're not going to see that. They're going to be focused on this worm on the surface. So I'm less concerned about a fish seeing the swivel and shying away from a bait. Okay. There are other situations that may cause line twist. A big one that, that causes line twist is throwing a drop shot. And a drop shot in an, inherently is a pretty straight bait. But when you're reeling it back, because that bait is coming off the line, 
the, the bait is here and the line is here, when you reel it in, it creates like a helicopter effect. So working the bait and fishing the bait doesn't cause line twist. But when you reel it back in to make another cast, you're twisting that line all the way on, on the retrieve in. Okay. Again, that's a situation that I would not want to use a swivel because typically in drop shotting, you're in pretty clear water. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm, I've already got several knots being used for different things and I don't want to add more knots, which kind of gets me to the last part of this, Megan. All right. I know a lot of guys are worried about line twist as a, man, what do we do to prevent it? What do we do to avoid it? And it kind of reminds me of the video that we did a couple of weeks ago about avoiding that gnarly cover. Like, oh, I'm not gonna throw into that because I don't want to lose my bait or I don't want to get stuck and snagged and things or, like that. Or even the video we did just a few days ago, of, oh, I don't feel comfortable doing using a certain bait. Using so a I'm crank bait, so I'm gonna avoid do doing it, right. Well, my message, guys, is, is that using baits that create line twist, whether it be a drop shot or a floating worm, or maybe even the question that came up was, does the Ozark rig create line twist? And I think, I think the Ozark rig, which glides, and the hover rig, which spirals, those things might eventually cause some line twist. But I'm not going to stop fishing those because they catch fish. Right, right. So in the same vein as that video that we did about I'm not going to stop fishing cover because I'm going to get snagged and lose some baits. The reality is I'm not going to stop fishing those baits that cause line twist. But there is something you can do that if you're fishing a bait that creates line twist, you can pretty quickly get that line twist out and go back to work. And that is, and I think a lot of guys know this. If, if, so if I'm fishing and I've got my line and it's starting to show twist, I'm just going to cut my bait off at the end. Okay. I'm going to put my boat in gear and kind of idle out. And I'm going to open up my bail and just let line go out in the water. Just line, no lure or anything like that. Okay. And I'm going to put out 50 yards of line. That friction that's in the water on the line will take the twist out oh. so all i've got to do is cool. lay that line in the water keep moving forward keep pu pulling out line get about 50 yards of line out there and that twist will come out as i'm moving forward reel it back in tie up my bait get right back to it so basically what i'm getting at here guys is that number one there are things that you can do to prevent line twist make sure you do all of those from the very beginning from the very beginning but secondly don't avoid baits that you know are potentials that are going to create that line twist because those are probably baits that are going to be that you're going to be successful with thirdly if you do get that line twist use one of these strategies for getting rid of that line twist so that you can get back into the game. Guys, we hope this uh, tip was helpful for you and we wish you a very happy new year and hope that everything is safe this weekend. Mm -hmm. And we will see you on Monday, on New Year's Day, Ooh. for a pretty exciting, we've got a, a, we've got a big week coming up. This has been our vacation break, <laughs> so we've yeah. been planning all sorts of good uh, videos coming up for the new year. We, we look to start the new year off with a big bang. So have a great weekend, a great happy new year, and we will see you on Monday. Mm -hmm. Stay channeled.